Hello, good morning, and welcome to today's Red Hat panel discussion on IT optimization. Um, my name is Andy Gilbert. I'm Red Hat Business Manager here at CMS. Um, my responsibility here is to work with our partners, helping them to upskill and enable around Red Hat technologies. With me today is Neil Evans from Red Hat. Morning, Neil. Um, Morning, Andy. So, um, what is it that you do at Red Hat, Neil? Okay, Andy. Um, so I've been at Red Hat for three years. I started out originally as the sales lead for cloud automation and virtualization in the sales specialist team. And just last month, I moved over to work in the partner team as a specialist and partner development manager with responsibility for cloud virtualization, automation, management, and storage. Great. So you're probably the right person to be talking to today for this day. I would hope so. <laughs> so so what we're going to kind of talk about today, um, obviously we've got one particular topic, um, but with Red Hat and with Red Hat's wider portfolio, this is all about digital transformation, right? And you know, to, to, to use an industry buzzword, of course, but um, that's that's what Red Hat is doing, you know, as a, as a digital leader. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, digital transformation, we use the off-used word journey. You know, it is a journey, but it's very much a big task for all of our customers to identify the areas which are challenging them in their business delivery and we want to help them on that journey to ensure that their transformation into digital transformation is something which is achieved. Yeah and as you say you know it's um, it's very much described as a journey and it's not just about technology it's people processes and the technology of course um, and I think that when people think about digital transformation it can be quite a sort of daunting subject to even think about and talk about. Um, so what Red Hat have done is they've identified sort of key, five key business challenges that customers typically face on this journey. Um, so we'll kind of talk about some of those, but these, these business challenges are around some IT optimization, which of course we're going to go into in a bit more detail today, um, agile integration, hybrid cloud infrastructure, cloud native application development, and then last but not least, um, management and automation, which is um, another topic that we've talked about in a previous um, panel discussion. Um, but all of those together kind of make up a significant part of that journey, right? So, IT optimization. Um, so I'm not going to go into too much detail right now because that's what we're going to be covering, but it's really about getting efficiency um, from your existing IT, um, making use or the best use of your existing um, investment and assets. Um, Agile integration is about getting more product productivity out of your systems. Um, and organizations, a lot of organizations have a mix of new and old technology. They've got legacy systems running in their data centers, they've got different data uh, different databases, different data sources, different systems and processes. And businesses need to kind of bring all of these systems together. They need to talk to each other, play nice, um, and produce this sort of consistent, usable data, right? Um, and Red Hat's key technology here is Red Hat Fuse, um, which is Red Hat's integration platform based on Apache Camel. Right there we go. Some of my Indeed. my open source um, knowledge coming through. But as alongside Fuse and as part of Red Hat's middleware portfolio, there's Red Hat Three Scale, which is API management. So that's all these clever connectors that make everything or allow everything to talk to each other. It's about the management of those APIs, um, you know, how you can actually reuse them and potentially monetize them. Um, you've got data virtualization, um, which is specifically how you integrate different data sources and kind of bring all of that data together um, and um, sort of have it appear as a single local data source. Um, and part of that as well is mobile application platform. Um, a lot of organizations are looking more at how they can um, take advantage of, of mobile technology. Of course, it's a big thing, um, but very much 
in sort of the business space, not just for the consumers. So that's something that, that is key for Red Hat as well. Um, and Red Hat Solution is really all around that sort of development, integration and, and management of mobile applications. Um, so that's agile integration. Now, if that is um, of any um, sort of interest specifically um, to any viewers, our previous power discussion um, was specifically about that whole agile integration piece. So um, obviously reach out to myself or Neil or your account manager here at CMS and we can provide you with the, with the link to that one as well. Um, so the next business challenge, so hybrid cloud infrastructure. Um, Neil, I'll, I'll let you handle this one. Thanks, Andy. So hybrid cloud infrastructure, it's a very, very interesting topic. It's not just about cloud, it's about virtualization, it's about using multi-cloud and this entire journey which we're finding organizations are taking these days. In talking to our customers, we know that many of them are already looking at using cloud, whether it be a public cloud provider, just one, or multiple cloud providers, hence my multi-cloud comment. Additionally, we're finding that, <coughs> excuse me, they, they want complete flexibility in their operation and they want to be looking at cost savings and how they can best address their overall budgetary challenges. And by looking at multiple offerings, it gives customers the flexibility and Red Hat helps our customers address those. Um, additionally, with regards to Red Hat systems and Red Hat offerings from subscriptions, we offer the Red Hat Cloud Access Program as well. So we help our customers on a journey with their Red Hat subscriptions to use them both on premise and also where they can deploy them into all the major cloud providers as well. So it gives you complete flexibility with regards to your subscriptions, gives you choice of cloud, and enables you to take control of the direction you wish to take with your digital transformation journey. Yeah, I guess um, that's quite an important thing. You know, you mentioned the cloud access program, and that's something that makes it very, very simple for customers that have got Red Hat subscriptions to just very, very easily actually migrate those into the cloud, right? And there's 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 no cost for them to do that um, in terms of the actual program. There's an online portal that they can just sort of register on and that links into the, the various public cloud services um, that they can then sort of create images for, is that right? Yeah, pretty much in a nutshell. Um, the big benefit, of course, is that the customer then actually owns a subscription. They still have the relationship with Red Hat as well. So they don't have to rely on a third-party provider to give them support for the subscriptions they got from Red Hat. They can come directly to us as they previously would have done. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then as part of that, um, you know, talking about cloud, um, the, the next business challenge is sort of around the cloud-native app development. And, 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 and what that really means. Um, and I guess simply a cloud native app is an app that's kind of built and designed that it can happily and easily run in any environment, right? It can kind of, you know, it's going to run the same whether that's on a server in your data center, um, whether that's in public cloud, wherever it is, you know you're going to get a, a consistent behavior from it. Yeah, it would do, Andy. The reality is that I think a lot of people in the past thought they could literally do a lift and shift into the cloud and they will actually address what their applications are doing and they just think it's going to be working exactly the same as we've done within the primary data centre. Um, part of the overall journey, especially towards the cloud native, is actually ensuring that you've got the ability to migrate your applications and you've got to address what you're doing in your data centre first. It's not just going to be a case of lift and shift. And Red Hat again can help our customers on that journey, you know, whether it be helping out with the private cloud to start with, with regards to OpenStack and making applications cloud native there, or if it's just a case of helping the customer from the outset by doing application modernization and migration. Yeah, yeah, which some of which we will cover as well. Um, but I mean ultimately the whole kind of application piece, you know, the, the real drivers behind it is that organizations are typically under pressure, those that are developing applications, they're under pressure to you know, bring releases out sooner, faster, more frequently, with new features, get everything to market as quickly as possible. So to do that, they have to streamline um, not only the development, but the deployment and management processes as well. Um, and they've got to be able to do this at scale, right? Because um, as demand increases, um, you know, whether it's, yeah, we're used to kind of running these old monolithic applications, but um, 
with cloud native approach and when you're using these cloud services and you're talking about potentially hundreds or thousands of application instances so you need to be able to kind of manage them at that scale so they need to be designed very much with that in mind um, you know we mentioned OpenShift but you know this is Red Hat's container management platform and that allows organizations to do just that um, you know we're not going to go into too much detail about container container technology uh, now but um, you know it's a platform that allows organizations to use and take advantage of container technology um, but also provide that kind of self-service on-demand architecture to actually support the delivery and deployment of those applications as well um, and as part of that you've got the Red Hat middleware portfolio Everything in there is container native, so you can run any JBoss or middle middleware technologies in a container environment as well, um, and take advantage of, uh, of, of of that technology too. Yeah, absolutely, Andy. I think one of the key things to think about there as well is the Opal Manager container platform. Is that it's extremely portable, and you can deploy it wherever you wish. We talk about the multi cloud, but additionally we can work with other vendors, um, hypervisors for example, so you can put it onto any VM you want to, you can put it onto your private cloud, you can then effectively have portability between multiple public clouds as well. One of the key key benefits, get your management, get your automation, get your container platform right, and you are delivering against your digital sort of transformation challenges. Yeah, it just gives you that that flexibility and that agility to kind of build on for the future as you kind of progress on that journey, right? So, um, and then the um, sort of the final part of that journey, and uh, so it's the final part in sort of the order that we're talking, but um, you know, this can come into play at absolutely any point because it's all about how you manage all of the elements that we've talked about um, and how you can potentially automate the various elements of that within your environment um, and you know, everything that we've talked about you know, it's about reducing complexity but complexity is always going to remain so how do you actually minimize that um, especially across um, all of these different environments um, and Red Hat has a number of tools that enable customers to do this um, so Red Hat Satellite um, those of you that are selling a lot of rail are probably familiar with satellite, but this is Red Hat's kind of infrastructure management tool um, for Red Hat environments, and you can control the complete life cycle of your Red Hat Linux estate. It's probably just worth mentioning now for anyone that's not aware, is I think it was about a year or so ago now, but Red Hat kind of updated and changed the packaging um, of um, Red Hat satellite so that it's now included within the smart management modules. Um, what that means is that it's quite simple to actually um, attach to opportunities um, and I think it makes it much more accessible for organisations that um, haven't got an enormous number of Red Hat servers um, but have got enough that you know, they're interested in looking at how they can actually stream on it all. So that's, that's, that's a very positive thing there as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things to emphasise now and then is you so management automation at any time in this journey. I've been arguing for years that management orchestration is key to having a seamless holistic infrastructure deployed and if you can get the management orchestration right you can actually then start interfacing with other vendors products as well because we look beyond just Red Hat. We're not just some of Red Hat's um, subscriptions, we look at managing a diverse infrastructure whether it's got different operating systems, different virtualization engines, etc. So if you can get someone who works in those areas, you can have satellite, for example, to help you with the management of your Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But if you've got a management tool which can interlink with that and also a, for, you know, another vendor's operating systems as well, you can start bringing complete management control to everything, not just the Red Hat infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. And I think with, with, with that in mind, um, Cloud forms is a is a great example of that in terms of hybrid cloud management and you know um, it's sometimes pitched as the manager of managers right because it can you know whether you're running VMware 
Hyper-V, Red Hat virtualization, it can kind of sit as a management layer on top of that. Talk to all of those um, hypervisors and environments and actually allow you to cre create you know, your own kind of self-service cloud-like environment from your existing infrastructure. Um, as well as kind of manage and allow you to move workloads in and out of private clouds as well. So um, that's, that's, that's a really powerful tool. Um, more specifically on the automation piece, um, there's Ansible. Um, so this is a, an automation platform and a, and, a, and a language that, I guess it's fair to say that if you think of any repetitive task within your IT organisation, you can effectively record that and then play it back at a target machine device of your choice. Right? So you can kind of cut down a lot of that admin. Yeah, um, Ansible itself, Ansible Automation, as the entire sort of product comes out, it's comprised of many elements. And what we're doing is we are giving our customers the ability to automate to their entire infrastructure, whether it be on prem, private cloud, public cloud, they can automate into network components, operating systems, applications. You can deploy an entire um, software like data center if you want to talk to public cloud, literally by running a playbook within Ansible Automation. And it is such a powerful tool, it gives you workload capabilities and you can bring in a, a what we call playbook. And through the role-based access, you can give automation rights to anybody. Um, to you, Andy, <laughs> you could actually have the right login and have a task to run, just literally click a button and deploy an entire infrastructure into AWS if you wanted to. I can do it, therefore you can do it. There you go, so right. simple, even, even I can do it, a, a, a bold statement. Um, no, but that, yeah, that, that, that's it, and you know, we're seeing a lot of people that are just, just seeing you know, the power of this, and Red Hat are sort of starting to integrate it more into some other technologies, which we'll come on to as well. Um, but finally then within the, um, this management piece we've got Red Hat Insights um, and this is a uh, sort of a, a fair to, to describe it as a SaaS, a software as a service tool um, that, that proactively identifies threats to security, performance, stability and availability within your Red Hat estate. Yeah, uh, it does a little bit more than that as well and as you say it is a SaaS tool it's proactively identifies threats to your own builds. Um, how it works is that customers can have um, completely obfuscated information sent back into the tool itself, and it can recognise the environments they're running, and it can proactively warn you of any changes you may need to put into your system, so it can avoid um, system crashes, etc. Very, very clever, very smart tool, and it's something which we are really, really sort of raising its profile within our infrastructure. Great, and um, we've got some exciting news about that, which I'll come on to shortly as well. So, so that's the wider Red Hat portfolio and those kind of key business challenges. So um, we'll go back now to IT optimization, um, the subject of uh, today's discussion. Um, so what does it really mean? You know, why is it important? What are the challenges that, that businesses are facing today with regards to optimization. Okay, so the big challenge Andy we mentioned earlier is really is around people, platform, etc. Ensuring we've got the right environment in place. What we're seeing though is that the drive is a push for increasing demand for digital services. It's not just a case of you know delivering a few applications into your environment, the digital services is exploding all the time. And organisations need to change, they need faster innovation, they're trying to do more with less as well. And we are seeing a lot of disruptive technologies coming in, if you think about what we've seen in the last few years with Uber, for example, Snapchat, etc. There's a lot of disruptive technologies coming out there and organisations are needing to change the way in which they do business to keep up with those disruptive elements which come into place. Now, one of the key problems we've recognised is that budgets aren't increasing. They are typically decreasing. Organisations do they ever? <laughs> well, we know, yeah. But they want to do more or less. And we've done a number of reviews on what people are spending money on, and there's multiple um, 
reports which are available on the monthly on the web, which are saying where IT spend is going. And we've recognised that 70% of IT spend is really spent on just keeping the lights on. If you're doing that, you've only got 30% of your budget left for innovation, and is that really going to achieve what you wish to do? So we want to help the customers on that journey to make the best use of their money. Um, we also recognise that organisations have an investment in existing technologies. And part of the open standards, open source methodology the Red Hat brings in is that we don't expect you to throw everything out. You know, we know what a brownfield looks like. We will help you work with what you've got and we will help you on this journey to make the best return for your investment. Yeah, and I, think, I guess that's what this, this, this piece is all about. It's how do you modernise, how do you innovate while retaining that investment that you've already made. Um, so with that in mind, you know, what can companies actually modernise within their environment? Okay, so we look at it as key areas of platform, virtualization, storage, and you mentioned earlier, application management. Okay, so platform modernization, is it all about the operating system? A lot of people argue it is, um, but it's not necessarily the case. You have heard me say earlier, we don't expect customers to throw out existing investments. There will be investments in, in operating systems which they will not be doing away with. However, when you look at an organization with a mixture of operating systems, and there are a mixture of Linux, for example, there could be some legacy Solaris, etc., even legacy mainframes, we can help customers who are on those particular platforms migrate to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And of course, you benefit from all of these sort of seven points that we talk about regularly of Realm. Um, by doing this, you alleviate some of the challenges you've got with regards to management and control of a mixture of operating systems. If you think about it, if you've got two or three operating systems, it's a lot easier to control than it is with eight or nine. And if you've got one Linux platform, you can actually start controlling That's the dream, system. right? <laughs> well, I think it is. Um, don't forget, Red Hat started with Linux and we've evolved, but Realm is still core to our business model. Yeah, and I think that um, you know it's, it's widely accepted that open source technology is a massive driver in all areas of technical innovation. Um, and it's fair to say you know, Linux is the largest open source community in the world, and no one knows Linux better than Red Hat. Right, so um, not that not that we're biased at all, but I think it's I think it's I think it's fair to say. So where organisations have the opportunity to kind of standardise on an operating uh, or, or create you know, a standard operating environment, um, that's going to allow them to kind of increase that efficiency and stability, reduce some of those management costs, um, but most importantly, sort of take advantage of some of these new innovations that are coming out as we've mentioned containerization automization um, and you know it's probably good timing to, to, to talk briefly about um, rail 8 um, which is which has been released very very recently um, and you know there's there's obviously there's lots of sort of technical advancements in there but some of the key features are some of the stuff that we've kind of talked about that have now been wrapped in to the new version of RHEL. So um, Red Hat Insights, um, so that's now included as standard within RHEL 8. So that's a massive benefit to, to, to Red Hat customers. They're getting um, you know, a really powerful tool there um, that's included. Um, for those organizations that are developing software, um, Rel8 has something called application streams, so um, that's frequently updated um, developer programming languages, frameworks and tools um, to actually design and create modern applications. Um, I guess there's always been a, a thing about Red Hat for people that aren't particularly technical, they're not sort of super familiar with it all, that you know, it's just all very, very command line driven, which is true and it still can be. Um, but RHEL 8 has a new web console, which is a new um, GUI that kind of is, is designed to make system administration, management and monitoring 
much, much more accessible to people who haven't got that kind of real hardcore Linux experience. So I think that kind of allows it to reach a wider, a wider audience than ever before. Perhaps do you agree with that? I absolutely do agree. I think one of the things we most probably over the last couple of decades is the point-and-click um, sort of mentality is prevalent throughout the IT world now, and it makes it easier for customers who are not used to a Linux platform they can actually see a graphical user interface and make use of it, it makes the transition easier. And I think that you know, that's really one of the reasons to bring that into play. Um, so along with that, there's a container toolkit. So, so we've mentioned um, containers, but so Rail now has the tools to create, manage, and share containerized applications. So that's all built into the OS. Um, and then finally, um, you know, one of the challenges um, for organisations who actually want to take advantage of all these new, 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 new releases when they come out is actually how you, how you upgrade. Um, and RHEL 8 has a new kind of in-place upgrade feature where you can install some tools, um, run some commands or maybe click on a button maybe once you've upgraded you can click on a button um, but you basically the server will then update itself in place so it makes it much much easier for, for organizations to actually upgrade um, yeah so I think that's it for kind of that platform piece um, there's a lot of um, sort of partner materials, um, sales conversations, guys, and so on about each of um, these business challenges. So at the end, we'll just kind of run through what those are and how you access them as well. So um, we'll uh, we'll come back to that. Um, so the next bit we talked about then was was virtualization, modernization, and apologies if you can hear that noise. We have a fire drill test every uh, Tuesday. We're not going to run out of the building, so don't worry. I think that's done now. Um, but virtualization, modernization, then now. Thanks, Andy. Um, I'm glad you told me that was a fire alarm test. <laughs> so, virtualization, modernization, this is a big, big topic for Red Hat and it's something which we are pleased to say we're doing extremely well in this particular arena. <coughs> if we look at the virtualization platforms we've seen over the last two decades, really, since true virtualization on the x86 platform became um, the norm, we had one big player, and the marketplace was pretty much sold up by them. Um, in, the, in parallel, there was work being done with alternative virtualization technologies, including KVM, which has become the basis for Red Hat's virtualization, previously known as Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization, we rebranded, I think it was about 18 months ago. And with regards to virtualization modernization, what we want to talk to people about is how virtual machine sprawl is actually driving costs upwards. And you're seeing an increase in cost, but you're actually seeing no real increase in overall performance or scalability. You've got customers who are locked into large enterprise licensing agreements. They are having to take on additional products on a three yearly basis just to qualify for the ELAs. And we see costs escalate, and as I say, there's no performance increase. And we've got customers asking us about alternatives. Now, one of the things that we can talk to our customers about is that there are two big benefits. With Red Hat virtualization, you have pretty much parity with other virtualization technologies. So you do exactly the same thing. We are not just going to be virtualizing Linux, you can identify other operating systems as well, including multiple flavors of Linux. Additionally, you've got the ability to have all of these sort of disaster recovery type capabilities, etc., that you previously wanted, and we can drive the price point down. What's even better is that if you're using Linux from Red Hat, you can see up to a 50% performance improvement over run it on a, another branded virtualization technology, which is a big, big so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that you know we, we, we see it with organizations that have got large Red Hat states. Um, 
between the parts, you know, they're keen to actually explore red hat virtualization technology, but more and more now we've got customers that are looking at um, Rev when they don't necessarily have um, a huge Red Hat estate, but they're kind of seeing those 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 benefits of the fact that yes, it can do what their existing solution can do. Um, it's got the benefits of, of open source, um, but um, it allows them to actually make use of some of this sort of newer container technology and such like as well and where they're looking to kind of modernise other parts of their architecture it all ties in really really nicely and I think that's one of the, the, the big things about Red Hat is the way that all of these technologies are kind of incorporated into the various solutions within the Red Hat stack so you know everything's going to gonna work well together. Absolutely and um, one of the things I'll be keen to emphasise is the fact that this is part of our journey to the cloud so if we've got customers who have a long-term goal. We see Red Hat virtualization as the first step into migrating into both a private, public, multi-cloud type approach. And Red Hat being Red Hat, we provide all the tools in the box. So we include cloud forms with Red Hat virtualization. So what that gives you the ability to do is not only manage your virtualization state seamlessly without any additional cost. If you're doing a migration from another proprietary vendor, we can include platforms as a tool to do a migration from virtualization to virtualization technologies as well. So you can actually map one vendor to Red Hat virtualization and move it over to achieve part of your transformation path. And it also gives you the ability to run multiple virtualization options as well. We, again, as I say, we're open. We believe in the open standard and open choice, so we won't actually lock you out of using other technologies as well. No, I guess that's the thing about with um, cloud forms as well is that because um, because it can manage Rev, obviously, but other virtualization platforms as well, it really gives you that flexibility and um, allows you to kind of create or begin on that pathway to to the cloud. Um, so again, you kind of go keep going in 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 circles, but in a good way because all of the solutions kind of link into all the other solutions. Um, but um, yeah, and I guess that the customers that are looking at looking at Rev or they're looking at the virtualization estate, um, you know, we've mentioned that the that the performance um, is is meeting or it's better than the competitors. Um, but um, I think some of the actual just the way that the licensing options work as well, they are or can be very favourable in um, in comparison to the competitors as well, right? Yeah, the subscription option, Andy, with Red Hat is extremely favourable and we've got a lot of large customers who've selected Red Hat's uh, virtualization as a technology to use because it gives them, I hate the phrase, but it actually says it all the time, more bang for the buck. I mean, if you go to the Red Hat website and look at reference references we've got on there. Um, International Airlines Group, part of which is British Airways, are a big Red Hat virtualization user. So it's testament to the power of the product and the summary of that site is actually using the virtualization. Yeah, that's a good point really in terms of you know, um, partners that we've got and um, you know, if you've got customers that have got large virtualization platform renewals coming up, um, you know, start talking to them about alternatives, talk to them about Red Hat. Um, because I think the the arguments are actually, you know, as you've said, you're not necessarily going to rip and replace what you've got, but if you're looking at expanding your virtual state, then it gives you the options, it gives you the flexibility, and um, at the very least, it can give you a bit more kind of Bargaining, bargaining power in terms of your current estate, but I think it's, I think it's a really kind of clear opportunity and a clear discussion to actually show customers how they can save money and, and become more efficient there. Yeah, definitely. We actually have an entire program based around that as well. So if you've got customers who are wanting to move from an ELA with a another vendor to Red Hat virtualization, we have a program which will help them do that, including training. Um, special pricing on subscriptions and some really, really great support options as well to actually do the work with the professional service as well. So definitely something we'd like to talk to customers about. 
Um, and another part of the um, virtualization portfolio now um, is um, hyper-converged infrastructure. So this is a this is a you know become a bigger a bigger thing within IT. Um, and Red Hat now has kind of a bundle of their their virtualization technologies that enable customers to do that. Yeah, um, converged infrastructure, hyper-converged infrastructure has become a very very hot topic past five or six years. We've seen some, a large number of vendors actually come to market with solutions now and Red Hat, unsurprisingly, has addressed this market as well. Now, hyper-converged addresses the remote office branch of this type of environment. It's also great for small organisations who wish to go on a journey to virtualization or private cloud as well. So we have two offerings. We have Red Hat's hyper-converged infrastructure for virtualization and also Red Hat hyper infrastructure for cloud and what that gives you is um, either a VMware, I said VMware, Red Hat virtualization <laughs> offering, um, with which you can deploy into remote office branch office as opposed to a VMware type solution and it gives you storage, software defined networking and your virtualization all within one reference architecture and it gives our partners the ability to offer a software based hyper converged infrastructure and build and deploy physical platform of their choice. So there's no hardware lock-in either. It gives you complete flexibility in how you wish to do that, and it is a reference architecture. Additionally, we do exactly the same thing with an OpenStack-based offering as well, and it takes advantage of Ceph, Gluster, OpenStack, Red Hat virtualization, and their software defined network configurations. I think that's key as well because you know, as you've mentioned, um, sort of you know, for sort of remote office or branch office, it's something that's relevant to small companies that don't have space or money to buy and spend a lot of money on different systems, different servers, doing different things. But at the same time, large organisations, you know, retailers are a good example where you know, in each they've obviously got a data centre, but in each store, they've got servers that are collecting all of that data for the day and then sending it back to the data centre. So they're kind of really, really good. Um, it's, a, it's a good target market for hyper-converged, right? Yeah, no, no, really. It fits every single organisation of every size. And I think one of the sweet spots in the market is actually going to be more sort of small, medium-sized businesses as well who wish to have a complete solution and know that it's backed by excellent technology. Great, okay, thank you. Um, and that kind of brings us on to, um, I guess, as, as part of that, you know, one element of, of hyper-converged is, is storage, um, which brings us nicely on to storage modernization. Um, and storage is a challenge that is not going to go away for anyone. Um, nobody is producing less data at any point. I think, um, I can't remember the exact statistic, but something like you know, 90% of all the data in the world has been produced in the last two years or three years or, or something like that. So um, obviously that's one of the, the big kind of drivers behind the need to, to modernise storage. Um, but what are the other reasons that customers are kind of really looking at their, their storage infrastructure now? I think one of the things we're seeing these days is the fact that it's the days of the big monolithic storage arrays is starting to go. Customers will have more flexibility and they're shying away from spending millions of pounds on big, big, chunky storage solutions. They want to have flexibility in how they deliver it, they want to address all the challenges they've got, so they, they want to have the ability to scale out as and when they want to without being forced to buy a bigger, chunkier expensive rates every two to three years and what we're seeing is that customers are asking us about software defined storage what it can do for them and how it can achieve their goals so we're effectively seeing a migration from the traditional hardware based proprietary storage solutions and going to more cost effective and importantly distributed software defined storage systems now <coughs> excuse me we are addressing that with two particular products. We give customers two options, which is a surf and cluster storage, and it gives you the ability to deploy this onto industry standard x86 hardware. So you can go and buy some servers from a traditional vendor, 
puts in disk storage or whatever your mix is, whether it be SAS, from, you know, SAS files, spin disks, or solid state disks, and you remove the locking. You deploy the software onto it, distributed software, and it gives you the ability to have different types of storage configurations. And we address different, you know, different workloads, including containers, hybrid cloud. We help customers reducing capex costs. We reduce provisioning times as well, because if you can actually just expand a distributed storage rate by plugging your server and taking through the management consoles there, provisioning speeds up. Ease of management by providing a single management console, so you can actually see everything through one environment. And most importantly, removing that vendor locking, which we've mentioned time and time again. There are two flavors of storage from Red Hat. We've got Ceph, which is um, object storage and single distributed cluster. It provides object block file level storage. It's a completely distributed system. There's no single point to failure. And it's extremely scalable up to the exabyte level. And it's freely available. Um, you've got replication built into it. It's highly fault tolerant. And as I mentioned, commodity hardware. No specific hardware support. You can just buy traditional off the shelf service. A great product. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I think that's that's one of the sort of the, the key messages in terms of the I guess the sort of the, the base message is that well, from the commercial point of view or the cost point of view is you know, you buy commodity servers, fill them full of disks and then let the software do all the clever stuff. Right. Um, and I guess that's that's a lot of that's what what Red Hat kind of works towards and enables is you know that whole software defined anything software defined storage software defined data centers um, because it's the software that does all the clever stuff these days it is absolutely and you know SEP as I say is just one of our choices on that software defined storage journey additionally for customers who are looking at network attached storage systems for streaming media services content delivery networks or just archival type storage targets. Um, we have Bluster as well, so we're addressing all and every need. And again, it's using the same technology, it's commodity x86 hardware. And our customers can deliver software defined whatever to their environment using commodity x86, reducing the cost price. Great, okay. Um, so, the final piece then in terms of the modernization is about the applications. Um, and we kind of mentioned some of this, but I guess the real challenge is that organizations or a lot of organizations have still got these, you know, these monolithic, these legacy applications potentially running on a on a mainframe somewhere, either because it's a critical business application that has been core to their business for years or they've acquired companies that have got existing legacy applications. Um, and the challenge for these companies is, you know, when they're looking to modernize, how do they move those, all, uh, those applications into newer, more flexible, more efficient architecture? Um, and you know, we talked about integration as well, but the challenge of how you actually connect your new modern applications, mobile applications, whatever it may be, to some of your, your legacy systems. Um, because it can be very expensive and time consuming to kind of rewrite or um, to, to, to migrate these applications. Um, and I guess organisations, they need to do this because they, first of all, they want to improve performance, right? That's absolutely key. Um, but as technology changes, you know, there's, there's, there's new, new security threats. You need to make sure that your legacy applications are protected. Um, you need to make sure that you can actually manage them in line with the rest of your environment. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, the, the need potentially to kind of connect them with your workforce through mobile applications um, potentially as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a significant challenge. Um, Red Hat has you know, a number of solutions specifically geared 
around applications, um, which we kind of talked about. Um, but one of the key solutions as part of Red Hat's middleware portfolio is enterprise application platform. Um, so this is a very modern application platform that is um, now you know, completely designed for containerized applications. It's sort of container, container native. Um, it's, it's lightweight and very efficient. You can run it in any environment. Um, you know, we've talked about organizations looking at multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, so it's important that they can actually run and manage their, their applications across those environments. Um, and they've got support, it's got support for all of the um, typical software frameworks in there. Obviously it's Java Enterprise, but things like Node.js, Spring, and lots of stuff that um, you know, developers will know a lot more about it than, than I will myself. Um, but organizations really look at how they actually move their applications into an environment like this, right? And one of the ways that they can do that is through OpenShift or through containers. Um, and, you know, we've mentioned it, and, and again, we're not going to go into uh, a huge amount of detail about container technology itself. Maybe we'll do that at a later date. Um, but containerizing these, these legacy applications really enables companies to kind of you know, make these apps portable, um, move them into whichever environment that they like, um, and provide all of the kind of all these, these features um, that we've talked about in terms of the, the, the ability to actually manage and orchestrate all of this stuff. Um, and I guess that's, you know, we're talking about all the software doing the clever stuff, but that's a really, really key thing for organisations to do right now, right? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things we can do, Andy, is we can help our partners with their customers on this journey. We've got application modernisation migration programmes, which we can work in partnership to and against as well, so we can not just talk about the stuff, and we can help deliver it too, which I think is one of the paramount importance. Yeah, I guess it can be one of the more complex tasks as well, so that's why having that support from Red Hat and the ability to kind of bring in consultants and look at right now how, not just what do we use to migrate, but how do we actually do that? You know, what are the steps? What is that? What does that individual journey look like? Very much so. And you know, we've got some very, very smart people who work for Red Hat who can help people on this journey. So, you know, it's always worth talking to us about that as well. You know, I don't think it's a dead end if you've got a challenge speak to us through you and we can definitely, definitely help. Indeed. Um, so then we've talked about um, the various aspects of IT, optimization, platform modernization, um, application, storage and virtualization. Not necessarily in that order, but um, those are the bits that we've talked about. Um, now it's fair to say that, you know, Red Hat aren't the only organisation, they're not the only company that has solutions in those areas. No, we're not. Um, I'd be lying if I said we were. But what <laughs> I will say is I think we're the only open source organisation which has this end-to-end -end portfolio of technologies which can help customers on a journey, whatever that journey may look like. Um, I, I can't think of anyone else who can help you with operating system, middleware, um, management, Yeah, and I think that's what, what makes Red Hat unique is that you've got all of these areas, you've got um, solutions, very, very modern solutions in every area of that, that IT infrastructure stack and beyond. Um, and of course, one of the really key things, and again, what makes Red Hat unique is you've got all of those solutions, but everything is open source. Um, and that's really what kind of makes Red Hat stand out. Um, and I think we've, 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 we've got a bit of time just to kind of talk about, you know, why that's important, you know, sort of the Red Hat way of, of doing things. Okay, so I think everybody's heard about the open source story and what the benefits are, um, but just to quickly sort of cover those off. By using open source, it gives us the largest platform developers 
and what we do is we look at the upstream community offerings and we then take the best technologies that are available to us, we harden it and we put a complete enterprise wrap around the solution. And through that what we have is the ability to deliver enterprise class software offerings to our customers. We can give class leading support which I believe is second to one. Um, and support with us isn't just a case of ringing up and saying you've got a problem with a, with, with a product. Our support gives you access to the knowledge base, it gives you access just to guidance. If you want to ring up and say what is the best way of doing this, that is part and parcel of the sort of solution. And because it's sold with subscription, you don't have any major revision upgrades or purchases to make because the subscription includes all of the upgrades as well. So if you're migrating from RHEL 7 to RHEL 8, which is obviously our topic at the moment, you don't have to buy another operating system. You're already entitled to the upgrade. So your subscription gives you support, and it gives you upgrades as well. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the wide range of developers out there in the marketplace is important. But I think what is also important is that Red Hat actually lives the community aspect of open source. To give you an example, Ansible Tower, which is part of the Ansible Automation platform, was a proprietary platform where Red Hat purchased it just over three and a half years ago. And what we did was we made it an open source product. We put it, we launched a community to actually deliver on a community program for Ansible. And that is running in parallel with Ansible Tower today. So you see the AWS project, which is community, and you'll see Ansible Tower, which is part of Ansible Automation. And what you have is we have some great developers doing fantastic work in the project. And as Red Hat, we have our own developers who are working and they will in parallel take information out of what community are doing and decide what is going to market. One thing I should say there is that there is obviously a divergence between community and what we offer. Ours is a complete 100% lockdown solution and we give you the support, we give you the security and we give you the software assurance and what we're using is totally, totally for the purpose. Yeah, and that's that's the, the, the whole kind of story um, of, of Red Hat really, isn't it? You know, taking taking what's out there, taking the very best parts of the open source um, community projects um, and developments there and really kind of turning them into true enterprise ready solutions. Um, but at the same time, then actually contributing to the community and giving back to the community the, 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 um, the benefits that actually come from Red Hat's own development as well. So, right. Um, as I mentioned um, at the beginning, um, everything that we've talked about today, um, Red Hat has obviously got a lot of um, information that's geared up for partners um, helping to kind of explain the, uh, the use cases, the business challenges, who the target audience is. So if there are certain things you'd like to learn more about, um, please come and talk to myself um, or your account manager here at CMS or talk to Neil um, and we can actually help to direct you to where some of these resources are but there's sales playbooks, there's sales conversations um, and a lot of really really useful information. Um, I don't know if we have any questions um, that have come in from the audience at this point um, but um, if there is anything um, that anybody wants more information on then um, please uh, let us know. Um, we'll wait and just see if there's any other questions coming in. Um, one last thing I mentioned then, so um, in terms of um, sort of partnering with Red Hat, and you, you, you touched upon this as well, um, but if we've got any um, anyone watching who is not currently a Red Hat partner, or perhaps you're an entry level partner and you're interested in um, Kind of upskilling um, and getting access to some more um, of the benefits that are there. Um, but again, it's it's um, most of it is done sort of through Red Hat's online portal, so it's fairly simple process. Um, we can obviously help you with parts of that, um, help explain exactly what the requirements are, what the benefits are, um, and. Um, yeah, just let us know and we'll kind of talk you through it. So, um, 
question. One of the questions that we've got here uh, that's come in, um, what are the stages of the IMS journey and um, how can Red Hat help guide customers? Okay, so the IMS journey is a proper rounded uh, program for how it brought to bear. And what it does is it gives us the ability to run an initial workshop with a customer to understand what their environment looks like. It's a free of charge workshop and it helps us understand their infrastructure and what they need to achieve and how they will evolve their platform and migrate from to the, you know, in this case it is VMware to Red Hat virtualization. And we will help look at the overall cost of VLA and we'll look at showing the customer how they can migrate from one platform to another and show cost savings of up to 40 to 50 percent over a three year basis based upon an existing ELA. So it's a workshop, it's an initial migration of initial targets, um, virtual machines, and then moving at scale over a three year period in the entire infrastructure. That is what the IMS program is. Additionally, we can take a lot of the benefits of the IMS program and bring it to bear for customers who may want to do a more phased approach and start looking at some of the virtual machines that got and just migrating all of their realm platform to uh, Red Hat virtualization for example. Great, and, and Red Hat will actually help customers kind of build a business case for that as well, won't they? Yeah, we actually support our partners in delivering this. The, the concept is that we would help our partners upskill to deliver professional services as part of the overall solution. However, uh, a partner who doesn't want to um, do the professional services aspect as well could leverage Red Hat professional services to deliver on that solution too. Great, okay, thank you. Um, I don't think we have any more questions, um, so we'll leave it there. Um, but thank you very much for joining us and uh, watching uh, the webinar this morning. Neil, thank you for uh, getting up early and making the long and arduous journey into London and braving the trains to get here. Um, An absolute pleasure, Andy. One thing I would add is that Red Hat does have a YouTube channel, and for any part of his interest, if you go to Red Hat, partner team EMEA channel on YouTube. There is a video there on how to register as a partner. So if you're not already a partner, feel free to view the video and then contact Andy to ask about uh, joining us. The other thing I would say is that for ready partners who are interested in taking advantage of some of the wider opportunities which being either advanced or premier will offer, Please go and speak to Andy or any of his colleagues and ask about talking to somebody in the partner development team. Because if you've got an interest in middleware, OpenShift, virtualization, OpenStack, management, automation, etc., there are specialists like myself who can help you on your journey and help you on your training course to move on to the advanced and premier stages as well. Great, thank you very much. Um, so that's it for this morning. Um, once again, thank you for joining us and um, look out for news of any future power discussions. Thank you very much.